five, Doctor of Pharmacy, for coming this far. You have done very well, and I want you to put your hands together for yourself. It is an honor to have you as our student and very soon as our colleagues in this noble profession. I would like to acknowledge the presence of some very important persons in our midst, in no particular order, but in fact, I would like to start by acknowledging the presence of our very own Vice Chancellor, Professor Mrs. Rita Akosia Dixon. <laughs> Yes, she is the VC of our university. Um, and I'm happy to say that she's also a member of faculty. She's a pharmacist. And I think those who are in this class, did she teach you? I don't think. Then you, you, <laughs> you may have missed a little, but don't worry, OK? All right, so she will speak to you. And I'm sure you've heard her speak, so you have not really missed. So we acknowledge the presence of our VC. We also acknowledge the presence of the Provost of the College of Health Sciences, Professor Christian Ejari, who is also a pharmacist and a faculty member. We'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our very own Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, Professor Samuel Asarin Kansa. We also have in our midst the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana in the person of Dr. Samuel Donko. I'll continue to introduce our invited guests who are up here as we go on, but I'd also like to um, acknowledge the presence of some preceptors who are in our midst. We have here Dr. Lord Kemeche, of Lord K Pharmaceuticals. We also have your Dr. Peter Jemfi, Alpha Duo Farm. We also have here Dr. John Odai Tete from the Food and Drugs Authority. We also have in our midst distinguished and uh, um, lovely faculty members whom I would like to acknowledge. Um, I'll call their names. And as they rise, you give them a brief round of applause. Or you wait when we are done acknowledging or mentioning their names, then you give all of them a round of applause. So I'll begin from my far right. We have Professor Francis Edu of the Department of Pharmaceutical Microbiology. Next to him, we have Professor Gustav Komlaga of the Department of Pharmacognosy. We also have Professor Melin Lincoln Kwao Mensa, <laughs> Department of Pharmacognosy. We also have Dr. Kweku Jemfi Opong, Clinical <laughs> Pharmacy, or Pharmacy Practice, sorry. We also have Professor Prisla Kolebia Mante. <laughs> I know why you are asking me like that. We also have next to him Professor Edmond Ekwaji from our Cognosy Department. We also have Dr. Newman Osafo from Ecology. We also have Professor Nobo Kunchobe from We also have from Pharmacology Professor Eric Boachi Jesse. I don't even know what to say, the way you put us human. We also have next to Prof. Boachi Jesse, um, the former exams officer of the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, <laughs> Professor James Oponchecheku. <laughs> we also have Dr. Mrs. Efia Mafo, <laughs> pharmacy practice. We also have Dr. Abna Brobe, <laughs> pharmaceutical chemistry. From pharmaceutical microbiology, we have Dr. Yao Dia Boache. From pharmacology, we have Professor Mrs. Cynthia Amenin Dankwa. 
We also have Professor Isaac Ayensu, Pharmaceutical Chemistry. And then we also have Professor Joseph Edu, Pharmaceutical Chemistry. Then we have Dr. Janet Ameyao, Pharmacy Practice. We also have Dr. Arnold Foucault, Pharmacology. Then we also have Professor Gwedema, Pharmaceutical Microbiology. So as we go on, I'll be introducing others as they come in. In our midst, we also have the Registrar of the Faculty and the person of Dr. Mrs. Adeline Angokosa. Thank you thank very, you very much, much for the applause. And thank you all for coming. We really acknowledge your presence and for um, accepting our invitation to be here this morning. Next on the program, we would like to take the welcome address and also a message on the purpose of our meeting from no other person than our dean, the dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy, <laughs> Prof. Samuel Asari in Kanta. Thank you very much. Good morning, Good morning to, to every one of us. This today, I think that uh, we would have an opportunity to learn some history. Since some of us were not taught by our vice chancellor, as she comes around, I'm sure you'll learn some new things that you have not known all this while. But to begin it, I want to say and establish that the first dean of pharmacy to premiere white coat ceremony is the person right in our midst today. Can we put our hands together for her? <laughs> Professor, <laughs> Mrs. Mr. Mr. Patricia Jackson. That is history 101. <laughs> Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and chair of today's function, Professor Mrs. Rita Kusia Dixon, Provost of the College of Health Sciences, Professor Christian Ejari, the keynote speaker, Mr. Dananjee Tripathi, the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, farm doctor, Samuel Kordonko, the pharmacy superintendent, News Hospital, deans of faculties and schools of the College of Health Sciences, deans and representatives of sister training institutions, vice dean of the faculty of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences, Professor Isaac Kinsley Amponsa, heads of department, the Catholic Protestant, Reverend Father Anthony Na, and the chaplain, sorry, and the Protestant chaplain, Reverend J.W. Echampon, representative of the chief executive of the Food and Drugs Authority, represented by the regional manager of the Kumasi office, CEOs, representatives of external training sites, and by this I mean community pharmacies, pharmaceutical industries, pharmaceutical marketing agencies, hospitals, and many others. Colleague senior members, colleague pharmacists, parents here, guardians, distinguished invited guests, our distinguished students dubbed RX25. <laughs> Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor and delight to welcome all of you on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and Chairperson of the occasion to our great institution, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology 
And if you care to know, the best university in the world for the provision of quality education <laughs> in consonance with the Sustainable Development Goals number four. And according to the published 2023 Times Higher Education Impact Rankings in June 2023. And I'm also proud to say that the new ranking will come in June 2024, and watch out for us. <laughs> As a faculty, we feel proud and privileged to commemorate in today's ceremony the transitioning of the eighth cohort of our Doctor of Pharmacy students from the preclinical sciences into the clinical, or what we call the apprenticeship years of training. And we cannot hide our joy as a faculty and appreciation in having all of you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, join us today to mark the remarkable achievement of our noble sons and daughters, nephews and nieces, cousins, grandchildren, to mention but a few. We want to say a very big thank you to you for making it to this particular ceremony. Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to know that now that our students are going to be inducted into pharmacy apprenticeship, external stakeholders in industry, community pharmacy, hospital pharmacy, pharmaceutical marketing, pharmacy regulatory affairs, among others, will partner with the university through the faculty to provide the needed advanced pharmacy practice experience to our cherished students to become the pharmacists that Ghana and the world need. I want, at this point in time, to pay a great tribute on behalf of the vice chancellor to all the facilities Gallant men and women who have served as preceptors and mentors to the seven cohorts of FAMD graduates that we have already produced. Can we put our hands together for them? Thank you very much. The immense support of the Ministry of Health, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, and Pharmacy Council and others can also not go unnoticed. We boldly say that we have come this far because of you. And once again, we say, are you cool? <laughs> it is my earnest hope that the current cohort of 255 students, which is made up of 135 males, 113 females, and seven international students will also enjoy your immeasurable support to become the envisaged seven-star pharmacists that we want you to be according to the standards of the WHO, which means that you should become pharmacists that are caregivers, that are decision makers, that are good communicators, that are leaders, that are managers, that are lifelong learners, and that are teachers. And by this commitment of the faculty and the university, we want to appeal to you, our noble benefactors, parents and guardians who are here, corporate entities, alumni amongst us and others, to come on board, our faculty initiative dubbed Sponsor a Project. And this is to improve the learning environments at the faculty for our sons and daughters who are right seated here today and their colleagues in the Doctor of Pharmacy program. You can sponsor a project in our faculty by donating chairs by donating air conditioners to our reading rooms because our students must have 
expanded space to learn. And in addition to that, you can also donate desktop computers to equip our drug information and pharmacy practice laboratories. Madam Chair, in response to the National Vaccine Development and Manufacturing Agenda of the Government of Ghana, to ensure pandemic preparedness and consequent establishment of the National Vaccine Institute by Act of Parliament, the eighth White Coast Ceremony has carefully chosen as its team a new paradigm in pharmaceutical manufacturing in Ghana, unveiling the role of PharmDs in vaccine production. I am therefore happy to announce to you that we have in our midst today an experienced and accomplished industrialist as our keynote speaker to share fascinating insights and perspectives on our noble theme. I therefore implore you, ladies and gentlemen, to relax and relish the treat that we have for you today. Before then, there are a few thoughts that I want to share with our noble students who are in transition today, RX25. The first thing I want to share is that all of us here today serve as witnesses, and we have high expectations for your professional practice. As the prospective eight cohorts of our FAMD graduates, we have already churned out seven cohorts who are practicing. You are going to be the eighth one. And if you'd permit me, Madam Chair, you are the eighth cohort. And you know in chemistry, <laughs> the number eight is the atomic number for oxygen. Is that not it? <laughs> and what is the relevance of oxygen to life? Helps us get energy. In fact, it constitutes our life. And without energy, we cannot have drives. And without our drives, we can't achieve anything. And so one of the key expectations that we have of you is that by the time you mature into practicing pharmacists, for the fact that you are the eighth cohort, we expect you to bring vitality and vigor into the profession and society. We expect you to provide a drive for our profession to cover the lands that we have not yet covered. And we expect great accomplishments from you so that you can plow back to KNUST and the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences for that matter. You may also recall that normally we say that the number seven is perfect or complete. And when every cycle completes, what happens? A new begins. And so you are also a batch or a cohort that we expect a lot of new beginnings from you. Charts that we have not been able to go before, we expect you to do that for the fact that you are our eighth cohort. I also want to share this. It is something that I have shared with quite a number of you before, that the most recognizable symbol of the scientist is a white lab coat. And the white lab coat is not for the purpose of aesthetics. What it simply means is that as you move and journey on in your profession, make science and data the purpose of your practice. Don't lean on opinions. Don't lean on perceptions. Don't lean on assumptions. Work with science and data, and your practice will go very far. The last but not the least that I want to share with you, because your oath contains a lot of things that you are supposed to also do, is today that we are transitioning you into the clinical years of your program of study, you are going to be dealing with patients. You are going to be dealing with industry players. 
you are going to be dealing with regulators. You are going to be dealing with preceptors and mentors and all the people that will come along your way. What should your attitude be? What I want to share with you today is that in all of these interactions, you have to be humble. You have to be hardworking. You have to be respectful. You have to be ethical and supportive. There should not be any room for pride and superior attitude. As we listen to some of your senior colleagues on the field, we get some complaints that some of you, just for the fact that you are called doctor, you don't want to work. You don't want to respect anybody that you met over there. That is not the kind of thing that we are expecting from the eighth cohort of our FAMD graduates. Madam Chair, as I bring my address to a close, I want to say that we feel very much honored and privileged to have you grace this occasion for us. And in addition to that, I want to recognize the presence of our esteemed lecturers who are here. It has taken a great effort because exams is also running at the same time, and they have made some sacrifices to be here. The president of the Formosca Society of Ghana, the director of pharmacy of the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, that carries the largest number of our trainees, is also here with us, and I want to give a special recognition for that. Our invited guests, parents, guardians, families, friends, preceptors, and others. You mean so much to us by your presence. And especially for parents who might have traveled very early in the morning to be here, we do not take it for granted at all. You might not have spoken audibly to us, but we can infer from your heart that you are telling us that the work we do means so much to you. That is why you have paid a price to be here today. We are so much grateful to you for that. <laughs> On behalf of the Vice Chancellor of the University, the Provost of the College of Health Sciences, the management and staff of the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, the White Coat Ceremony Planning Committee, ably chaired by Dr. And Mrs. Messio Pareado. I want to formally welcome you with great honor and pleasure to our eighth White Coat Ceremony. Enjoy the occasion, our beautiful campus, and carry fond memories of Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences and the KNUST back home. Thank you once again, and may God bless you. Thank you very much, dear Dean, for such an inspiring message. We are indeed grateful. So our students, you've been told to pursue knowledge, serve with empathy, embrace new ideas and innovations, and above all, have a good attitude as you proceed to your clinical years of your training. I would like to continue with a few more introductions as um, some of our distinguished guests have walked in. We have in our midst Dr. Enchi Kusi, the Dean of Medical School. Hey, Professor, sorry, I have here, sorry. Professor, of course, Professor Enchikusi, the Dean of Medical School. We also have here, now I'm even, and now when it's Mr. here, I don't know whether I should say doctor or Mr. Okay. So let me just say it as it is. Mr. Kwesi Akumia Chematin, who is a pharmacist, a former member of parliament, and also a former director of pharmacy at the KNUST Hospital. We also have Mr. Benjamin Kwating Frimpon, Director of Ashanti Regional Pharmacy Council. 
We also have Dr. Andrew Poku, a representative for the Ashanti Regional Director of Pharmacy. As have been already introduced or mentioned by the Dean, we have in our midst the Protestant Chaplain, Reverend J.W. Echampong. And also the Catholic Chaplain, Reverend Father Na, who gave us the opening prayer. As I said, I'll continue with the introductions as and when others come in. So we'll continue with our program, and I would want you all to be seated as we move on to our next on shadow, we would have a message from the chairperson of this program. And the chairperson of this program is no other than our own VC, Professor Mrs. Rita Akosia Dixon. Thank you very much, uh, Madam MC. Um, I want to crave the indulgence of all of us and stand on the formidable protocol that has been established by the Dean and say a very good morning to all of you. I said good morning to all of you. Good that is much better. Thank you. And once again, I want to thank you, Dean, Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, for actually taking your time to appreciate our stakeholders. All the friends of the human race, all stakeholders, facilities that have brought us this far. I want to add my voice, not just as the chair of this auspicious occasion, but also as vice chancellor, and say, we salute you. We thank you. We thank you very much. Because without you, we wouldn't be here today having the ace. And thank you again, Dean, taking us through memory lane. KNUST, we were at it again. The pace setters gene was at work. So we had to set the pace eight years ago. And I recall during those times, the planning committee was chaired by Professor Mrs. Francis um, Osudelkum. We hadn't done this thing before. So we all, and I'm sure um, Dr. Messi Opariado will remember this. We gathered in Madame's office with the planning committee. I, I cannot remember the videos that we had to watch that day. Madame, do you remember? We kept moving from one video globally to another, just to be able to get the first white coat ceremony through. But what we were proud of was that at the end of the day, we were able to customize it to suit us. And that is why we have gone through, and today we are witnessing the eighth white coat ceremony. I think the staff of the faculty need a round of applause. Thank you very much. Obviously, you, when you are applauding the staff of the faculty, then we have the provost of the College of Health Sciences under whose leadership we have come this far. Provost, I equal to you and your team. I stand before you today filled with immense pride and a deep sense of responsibility. Pride in witnessing this momentous occasion where you, the FAMD class of 2025, embark on a journey to shape the future of pharmaceutical care in Ghana. Responsibility because the future of pharmaceutical manufacturing 
in our nation rest to a large extent on the shoulders of well-equipped and passionate individuals like yourselves being trained in our tertiary institutions in a time like this. Indeed, the theme for the occasion, a new paradigm in the pharmaceutical manufacturing in Ghana, unveiling the roles of PharmDs in the scene production is particularly fitting and pleasing. And I want us to give a very special round of applause to the planning committee and the faculty and the college. Thank you. Do you want to do it better than this? Thank you very much. Thank you. It underscores the transformative potential that lies ahead and the crucial role that the FAMD graduates will play in this exciting new chapter. For decades, Ghana has relied heavily on imported vaccines. However, and as you are aware, the tides are changing with the bold decision taken by the leadership of this country. Indeed, COVID-19 had many, many, many lessons to teach us, and we learned as a country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, of course, the recent history with COVID, coupled with the shortage of the scenes and government's subsequent resolve to ensure the scene manufacturing in Ghana is a wake-up call to all of us. Consequently, we have witnessed a groundbreaking initiative, the inauguration of the board and officers of the National Vaccine Institute last year. This institute has been provided with financial support to coordinate and facilitate the capacity of domestic pharmaceutical companies to fill finish and package mRNA, COVID-19, malaria, tuberculosis, and other vaccines in Ghana. This shift, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, presents a unique opportunity not only to ensure vaccine security, but also to create a thriving pharmaceutical industry that fosters innovation, job creation, and economic growth. As the nation's premier faculty for the training of pharmacy and pharmaceutical scientists, we must continue to work very, very hard to be at the forefront of this quest and help to sustain, so find sustainable solutions to our medication requirements. Let me gently remind you that your rigorous academic journey, and I'm referring to you as students for whose reason we are here today, your journey of training and exposure will continue to equip you with a comprehensive understanding of drug discovery, development, formulation, production, and quality control, and many others. By the time you graduate, for us as a university, and as a college, and as a faculty, we are confident you will possess, of course, working with our stakeholders, you will possess the expertise to navigate the intricate processes involved in the scene manufacturing, ensuring adherence to the highest standards of safety, efficacy, and quality of life-saving vaccines and essential medicines for Ghanaians and the rest of the world. As FAMDs, we are looking forward to you playing a vital role in educating the public 
about the importance of vaccination, dispelling myths, and addressing vaccine hesitancy and all the others. You will be the trusted voices in our communities, advocating for vaccine equity and ensuring that everyone has access to these life-saving interventions. Let me be quick to emphasize that the journey ahead will not be without challenges. The field of vaccine production is constantly evolving, demanding continuous learning and adaptation. But I have no doubt whatsoever that your hard work and wavering dedication combined with the strong foundation you have received will enable you to overcome all the obstacles. As you embark on this new chapter, I'd like to urge you to embrace all the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Remember, the future of pharmaceutical manufacturing in Ghana, as I said earlier, rests on your shoulders. And we will continue to look up to you to champion public health innovations in this arena. This is a charge you must promise all of us that you will keep at all times. Do you so promise? Do you so promise? Yes. Thank you. Even before you take your vows, I have the utmost confidence that you will rise to the occasion and make a significant contribution to the shaping of a healthier and a more prosperous future for Ghana. Let me also remind you that the white coat you are going to don today is a symbol of professionalism, empathy, integrity, and trust in the healthcare profession that you have chosen to be part of. May your willingness to serve humanity as you train forever remain paramount to you. May your journey be filled with purpose, passion, and unwavering commitment to serving your nation and the world at large. Once again, from all of us, we say congratulations. And on that note, I am happy and grateful for the opportunity to serve as the chair for this very, very important occasion. I thank you all very much, and God richly bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam VC. We are very, very grateful. I'll still continue to do a few more introductions as we go on with the program. And so I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Thomas Ejakumpoku Fempo from Suntreso Hospital. Can you give us a round of applause, um, a wave if he's around? All right, thank you very much. We also have Dr. Francis Che Fempo, Kumasi South Hospital. Thank you very much. We also have some preceptors I would like to acknowledge. If you are here, kindly give us a wave so that we acknowledge your presence. We have Mr. Peter Dia, Midnight Pharmacy, Dr. Mrs. Linda Asari Ejabing Bedu Ado, KNUSC Pharmacy. We also have Dr. Clifford Sefa, Roma Pharmacy. Thank you very much, Mr. Sefa. We have Dr. Marian Osei Amwesi, Ashanti Regional Medical Stores. Thank you very much, Madam. We also have Mr. Anthony Golo, The King's Pharmacy. Kweku, Mr. Kweku Tieku Jesiduku, Guaso District Hospital. Thank you. We also have Dr. Kwesi Akomia Chemating, KAK Pharmacy. Thank you. 
Then we also have Dr. Kofi Baye, who is the former director of pharmacy services and also CEO of Alba Pharmacy. Thank you very much, sir. We also have here Mr. Frederick Opombewa, Juliponia Pharmacy. Thank you very much, sir. We also have Mr. Danso Mensa, Poku Pharma Limited. Thank you very much. We also have here Madam Otiwa Apieni Azu, Oak Ridge Pharmacy. Thank you very much, Otiwa, Dr. Otiwa. We also have here Dr. Samuel Kwache Afrao, Suntreso Government Hospital. Thank you very much. I would like to do this because we acknowledge your presence, so please allow me to call out their names. We also have Dr. P.K. Brichum, Menshia Government Hospital. Thank you very much. We also have Dr. Angelina Opoku Benewa, also from Menshia Government Hospital. Dr. Cynthia Yebua and Dr. Joseph Agbe here from um, we, Dr. Cynthia Yebua from Konfanochi Teaching Hospital and Dr. Joseph Agbe here from KAK Pharmacy. Then we also have Dr. Mali J. Sego from Lord K Pharmacy. Thank you very much, doctors, for coming. Oh, we are very happy to see some of our students among the, the list. Oh, you are, you are welcome. Our past students. We are very happy to see you, that you are preceptors and you are taking care of the, the younger ones. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. So we'll continue the acknowledgement as we go on. Some of our faculty have joined us, and I would like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. John Ni Adote Adote, <laughs> pharmaceutical chemistry. We also have here Dr. Kofi Mensa Buama, pharmacy practice. And we also have Dr. Atakra, pharmacy practice. Thank you very much for the screaming, screaming welcome. <laughs> All right, so we have gotten to another very important um, session of our program, which is to have the keynote address. And I would like to invite our dean, Professor Samuel Asari in cancer to introduce our keynote speaker to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mrs. Ebrina Santiquitia. Today we have in our midst to deliver the keynote address, Mr. Dananji Tripathi, who is a registered industrial pharmacist and entrepreneur, and serves as a dynamic chief executive officer of Pharmanova Group of Companies in Ghana. He is a leader in African pharmaceuticals and will be speaking to us on the theme, a new paradigm in pharmaceutical manufacturing in Ghana unveiling the role of PharmD graduates in vaccine manufacturing. His extensive experience and groundbreaking achievements and dedication makes him a compelling voice on this particular topic. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Tripathi's career exemplifies the new paradigm in action. Since 1999, 92, sorry, he has navigated the industry, rising from a chemist to leading the Pharmanova Group's remarkable growth. Under his leadership, Pharmanova established CGMP compliant plans, becoming the first to locally produce vaccines and some essential medicines in Ghana and the Ivory Coast. He established Pharmanova DNA Diagnostic and Forensic Services, expanding healthcare solutions. This dedication to self-sufficiency aligns perfectly with our theme for the year. He still remains at the forefront of innovation, leading research and development and initiatives, like the local production of anti-snake venom for the Ghana Health Service, and then in 2021, he also 
established the Atlantic Life Sciences Limited in Ghana, which produces ophthalmic and inhalation anesthesia products. He organizes annual snake bite management conferences, demonstrating his commitment to continuous improvement and knowledge sharing. His vision extends beyond manufacturing. He champions affordability and accessibility, recognizing healthcare as a fundamental right. This mission is reflected in Farmanova's focus on high quality affordable medicines and its active role in community development. His leadership roles in industry associations further demonstrate his commitment to shaping a brighter future for African pharma Suticals. Dr. Tripathi's achievements have garnered numerous accolades, including pharmaceutical CEO of the decade, an induction into the Ghana Corporate Hall of Fame. He is the current vice president of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association of Ghana and treasurer of the West African Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association. These recognitions solidify his position as a respected leader in the industry. At this ceremony, he is going to share valuable insights on navigating the dynamic pharmaceutical landscape, embracing technological advancements, and fostering responsible practices. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming to the podium Mr. Danaje Tripathi as our keynote speaker for the morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Rita Dixon, the President of the PSGH, Provost College of Health Sciences, <clears throat> the Dean of Faculty Pharmacy, and uh, Protocol Absurd. It is an immense honor and privilege to stand before you today as the CEO of Atlantic Life Sciences and Pharma Nova Limited, and to address such a distinguished gathering at this auspicious white coat ceremony. As we gather here to celebrate the transition of Form D students into the clinical years of the Doctor of Pharmacy program, we also embark on a journey of exploration and discovery, a journey that holds the promise of transforming the landscape of pharmaceutical manufacturing in Ghana. Today, I stand here not only as a representative of Atlantic Life Sciences, but also as a mentor and a guide, ready to unveil a new paradigm in pharmaceutical manufacturing and to shed light on the pivotal role that Form D graduates can play in the area of vaccine production and vaccine manufacturing. Madam Chairperson, the theme of today's ceremony, a new paradigm in pharmaceutical manufacturing in Ghana, unveiling the role of Form D graduates in vaccine manufacturing. That resonates deeply with the philosophy of innovation and the progress that defines Atlantic Life Sciences Limited. We have taken an initiative to part journey that has put Ghana on the world map on one of the countries that is ready to take up the challenge of vaccine manufacturing. For decades, our sister company, Pharmanova Limited, has been importing life sciences vaccines and immunoglobulins 
such as anti-rabies serum, anti-rabies vaccines, tetanus toxide, anti-tetanus serum, snake venom, etc. However, beginning in the year 2017, Atlantic Life Sciences Limited was established with the sole aim of manufacturing all kinds of sterile products. Products like large volume parentals, that's infusions, small volume parentals, various injectables, ophthalmic preparations, inhalational anesthetic solutions, products like halothane, isoflurane, sevoflurane, made in Ghana, and biological products like serums and vaccines. By January 2023, the construction of state-of-the-art fill and finish vaccine of uh, local production had been completed at the premises of Atlantic Life Sciences Limited. That's a great success for a country what we have today. And the company has since then been engaging with the bulk manufacturers of WHO pre-qualified vaccines in preparation of local production through technology transfer processes. Vaccine manufacturing is a capital intensive venture that also requires patience and a dedication. However, our commitment to advancing public health and improving the quality of life for the people of Ghana and Africa had been the driving force for the company. In view of this, we have planned to produce in three phases. Vaccines such as TD, test nuts, diphtheria vaccines, HPV vaccine, that uh, human papilloma virus for the cervical cancer, hepatitis B vaccine, pentavalent vaccine, pneumococcal vaccines, meningococcal, MR, measles and rubella, oral post, uh, polio vaccines, rotavirus vaccine, and all these vaccines are for the EPI programs for the childhood immunizations. Madam Chairperson, Ghana, like many other nations, faces numerous challenges in ensuring equitable access to essential vaccines. The recent global health crisis have underscored the critical importance of robust vaccine manufacturing capabilities, not only for safeguarding public health, but also for promoting economic prosperity and national security. It is in this context that the role of PharmD graduates in vaccine manufacturing assumes paramount significance. PharmD students, you stand on the threshold of profession that holds immense potential to shape the future of healthcare in Ghana and beyond. Your journey through the rigorous curriculum of the Doctor of Pharmacy program has equipped you with a solid foundation in pharmaceutical sciences, clinical practices, and patient care. But beyond the confines of the classroom lies a vast and unexplored territory, the realm of vaccine manufacturing, where your knowledge, skills, and passion can truly make a difference. From these students, very soon after you have successfully gone through your clinical years, you will come out as a PharmD graduates. Subsequently, as you embark on your professional careers, I urge you to consider the myriad opportunities that await you in the field of vaccine manufacturing and sterile productions. Whether it is the area of research and development, quality assurance, regulatory affairs, or production management, you unique blend of clinical expertise and pharmaceutical knowledge positions you as invaluable contributors to the global vaccine ecosystem. 
We all are aware that at African Union level, Africa CDC, they are creating the kind of ecosystem for the vaccine manufacturing in Africa. By choosing a specialized in vaccine production, you not only empower yourself with a fulfilling and rewarding career, but also serve as catalysts for positive change in the fight against infectious diseases. But the question now is, how can you prepare yourself now to be the part of the new paradigm in pharmaceutical manufacturing in Ghana? Vaccine production is a highly specialized field that requires a diverse range of skills and expertise. You stand a better chance of positioning yourself in the vaccine ecosystem after school if you make time to acquire some knowledge and develop the following skills. I want to talk about five of them with my personal experience. First, you need to have the requisite scientific knowledge. A strong foundation in pharmaceutical sciences, biochemistry, microbiology, and immunology is crucial for understanding the principles underlying vaccine development and production. Knowledge of all cell culture techniques protein expression, purification, and analytical methods is also essential. As experience that uh, we studied uh, pharmaceutical and our experience has been uh, making medicine all throughout our life. The vaccines is a little unique for us also, and that is all we have to acquire knowledge by scientific uh, informations of label. The second point which I want to make here that with the quality assurance and the regulatory compliance skills. In vaccine manufacturing, adherence to stringent quality standards and regulatory guidelines is not an option, but it is a must. This is necessary to ensure safety, efficacy, and consistency in the quality of products manufactured. Hence, skill is quality assurance, quality control, validation, and compliance with good manufacturing practices and regulatory requirements are vital. The thirdly, technical proficiency is an important skill that is required in operating and maintaining complex equipments and technologies used in vaccine production, such as bioreactors, chromatography systems, filtration units, and automated manufacturing platforms. Familiarity with process optimization and scale-up techniques is also valuable. Skill number four is to do with ethical and professional conduct. As a Form D graduate involved in vaccine manufacturing, you must uphold the highest standards of ethical products, ethical conducts, integrity, and uh, professionalism in your work. And this starts from school. You need to learn to be ethical in your white coat. Your reputation can be marred by our one mistake or professional misconduct. This can spoil our career. So compliance with ethical guidelines, transparency in research practices, and commitment to public health and safety should be held in high esteem by you throughout your professional career. Last but not the least, continuous learning and professional development are vital. Given the rapidly evolving nature of vaccine science and technology, Continuous learning and professional development are essential for staying current with industry trends, best practices, and regulatory updates. Pursuing advanced education, attending conferences, and participating in professional organizations can enhance your skill 
and expand your knowledge in vaccine production. Madam Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, as we look to the future, let us envision a Ghana where cutting-edge vaccine manufacturing facilities stand as beacons of progress and innovation, where PharmD graduates are celebrated as pioneers and leaders in the field, and where every individual has access to life-saving vaccines regardless of their socio-economic status. This vision may seem ambitious, but it is within our grasp if we dare to dream boldly and act decisively. In conclusion, I am grateful for this opportunity to celebrate with all of you as a guest speaker, and I am grateful to the faculty leadership for this honorable opportunity. And uh, let me extend my heartfelt congratulations to the PharmD students on this momentous occasion. As you've done your white coats and embark on the next phase of your journey, remember that you carry with and conviction, for it is through adversity that we grow stronger and wiser. And always remember, Atlantic Life Sciences Limited stands nearly to support and mentor you in your pursuit of excellence in vaccine manufacturing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Danade Tripathi. I've reached India already. All right, so we acknowledge the presence of Dr. Samuel Frimpong of the Ghana Standards Authority. Thank you very much. All right, please. Um, this program is also sponsored by the kind um, gestures of some companies, and I would like to mention, in no particular order, Lord K Pharmacy and Crash Smoothies and Juice Bar. Then we also have Alpha Duo Pharmacy, Menry Pharmacy, Panacea Pharmaceuticals, Peniel Engineering and Supply Limited, Gilat Chemist Limited, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, and Pharmanova. Thank you all very much, our dear sponsors. We acknowledge your kind gestures. So we have gotten to a very exciting and much awaited time for this ceremony, which is the gowning of our students. And I would like to call on the chairperson for the White Coat Ceremony Committee of the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. Mrs. Mary Opari Messi, sorry, Opariado, to take over this session. Thank you very much, Madam MC. Madam Chair, Professor Rita Akusia Dixon, it is a great pleasure to start the proceedings to gown 247 students of the class of 2025. And we thank God for how far he has brought you all, and we say congratulations. And before we start, I would like to say a big thank you to Mr. Trapati. I called him on Wednesday afternoon, and he was in India. And he said he'll get back to me. In a few minutes, he said, I'll be in Accra tomorrow. And this morning, he's here. So we are very grateful and really appreciate your presence with us. Thank you so much for coming. I'll now call on Professor Oponchecheku and Dr. Numan Osafo to help me with the gowning process.
So we'll start with calling some of our lecturers to gown the first 10 students. Dr. Efia Primpoma Mav. <laughs> Professor Eric Bwachi Jesse. <laughs> Professor Nobo Kuntube. <laughs> Professor Priscilla Manti. <laughs> Dr. Abna Brobe. Dr. Kweku Opong Jenfi. <laughs> Professor Gustav Kwamnaga. <laughs> Professor Marianne L. Jesse. Boachi Jesse. Professor Edu. Dr. Arnold Foucault. Francis Makubo Nabik <laughs> Daniel Apia <laughs> Ahmed Feka Kufuo <laughs> Samuel E.J. Sefa <laughs> Ose Kojo Amwa Felix Tete Makote. <laughs> Ellen Fosubrobi. <laughs> Silas Sami Abubri. <laughs> Kenneth Ousubwache. <laughs> Elvis Ejapong Chumesi. <laughs> Turn to the right and present your codes. Take a bow and take your seat. We are take a bow and take your seat. You are privileged to have a BNF. So as you walk down to your seat, you'll be given a BNF. And these BNFs were presented to us by the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. 250 copies. Mary, in the Sinak, Jessica Jaba, Owari Watin Jr., Gracious Elinwa Amankwa, Deborah Kukwa Ubu. Alexander Edu, Patrick Asante, Nana Kwame Efriye Eji, Emmanuel Osei, Stephanie Victoria Isedu. Turn to the right and present your coat.
Take a bow and take your seat. Adra Oye Bueldu Asenso. Jocelyn Dufie Poku. Claudia Adra Esando. Brenda Tenentia. Peter Rodas Ahiatat. Elenam. Nyanlezi Dogbo Mary Amaje Mfuabedu Andini Anum Kome Tina Eju Bomisen Isa Votuoni Inya Turn to the right and present your coats. Take Take a bow and take your seat. <laughs> Kenneth Abeku Fletcher. <laughs> Emmanuel Anefi Frimpong. <laughs> Derek Eusi. <laughs> Clara Asari. Rosmond Ajinfra Echampo Abna Ejima Donina Antoinette Esenam Ekwamwa Ellen Domiako Clinton Yabua Akosia Osa Ejaku Poku. Turn to the right and present your coat. Take a bow and take your seat. Daniel Atiso Dose. Michael Ousuansa. Daniel Brink Crying Ayebeng. Our first last Achicho Bay. Jake Jamina Ose. Samuel Ousu. Joel Echampon. Tracy Ba Mensa. Sarah Abuaji. Lord Opong Tre Kwati. Turn to the right and present your coat. Take a bow and take your seat.
Thank you very much, lecturers. Please kindly take your seats. <laughs> Professor Edmond Ekwadi. Dr. Janet Amriel. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Edu. <laughs> Professor Isaac Ayesu. <laughs> Professor Cynthia Amenindankwa. <laughs> Dr. Yao Duabwachi. Dr. Kofi Buama, Dr. John Adote, <laughs> Professor Bedema, <laughs> Dr. Paul Obin. Emmanuel Simons Isiama, <laughs> Fabna Jakiti Sapon, <laughs> Charles Lamtemreku, <laughs> Cosmos Jan, <laughs> Fafali Hezro. <laughs> Prince Nuete Kwame Kwame Omari Enyim Danfo Jacob Abora Wachi Michael Owen Comfort Ofori Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seats. Shalina. Okai Kotego Ruth Ejewa Kwashi Ruby Ama Eshen Alfred Isedua Apia Christopher Kojo Yeboa Joseph Segbewu Clement Edutando, <laughs> Ebenezer Amon Nto Jr., <laughs> Joel Amwakubedu, <laughs> David Colbert Bati. <laughs> Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seats. Tony Kwesi Ofosu. Sebastian Jerry Nyaku Esien. Nana Yao Obing Frimpong. David Ofori Ajimai. <laughs> Neil Apia Bweji. Bu 
Regina Ajua Fimpoma. Sarah Dankwa. Duana Equia Gun. Collins Bedu Opoku. Princess Owusu Chemanting. Present your coat, turn to the right. Take a bow and take your seat. Kingsley Kweku Tangoni Dang. Aishata Manki Abubakai. Efia Afra Kuma Fredria Akima. Isabella Kunama Ofori. Elsie Pokwa Otu. Unisewa Ousu. Morris Ofori Yeboa. Rosemond Anderson. Abdul Jaba Ahmed Hulu. Christine Asari Kranchi. Turn to the right and present your coat. Take a bow and take your seat. Isabella Bryna Nyan. <laughs> Marcia Afiba Amihe. Sadatu Ibrahim. Ama Obribia Asariano. Daniel Ousu Atakra. Benjamin Bene Jassi, Derek Jabano, Samuel Okokunti, Theophilus Oting Riafe, Herbert JC. Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seats. Thank you very much, preceptors and lecturers. Please kindly take your seat. Dr. Mariam Amwezi, Doc, Mr. Francis Chafin Pong, Dr. Anthony Golo, Dr. Linda Sare Ajaben Beduadu, Mr. Kwekuti Eku Jesi Doku, Duku, sorry, Dr. Kweku Abaka Ewizi. Dr. Otiwa Azu, Mr. Samuel Kwache Afra, Thank you. 
Dr. Lord Kemeche. Mr. Peter Jenfi. Mr. Kwesi Chairman Ting. <laughs> Professor Kinsley Aponsa. <laughs> Richmond in Ketia. Jesse Ousu Esiama. <laughs> Joseph Caleb Eje. <laughs> Adai Emmanuel. Bento Bernard Echo. Question Patrick. Pa Kwesi Baini. Ankwa Reeves Ronald. Vincent Michael Ampa. Kwami Ousu Ajimai. Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seat. Patrick Adai Mensa. Abiba Adams. Suzanne Ejay. Ernestina Akosia Santu Asafu. Isahak Fadila. Fidels. Munim Bab Babon <laughs> Esther Equia Kosu <laughs> Eraba Equa Nyamiche Akute <laughs> Alice Pokua Adansi <laughs> Gordon Usuafra Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a, take a bow and take your seats. Ohima Yebua Bonsu. Akosuya Jewa Kunedu. Emmanuel Abuatima Enji. Kodjo Bonzi Okosu. Justina De Graf. Nana Kosia Diffie Ejechu. Prince Kojo Echampo. Atisha Arade Akresi. Ekuya Chewa Ousu. Nana 
Yentumi Fokuo Abebio. Turn to the right and present your coat. Take a bow and take your seats. Emi Oforiwa Mensa. Edna Amalfo to four. Opoku Edwin Enchi to Stanley Ankuma Miroku. Isaac Tum Amalfo Esihini Yabua. Apreku Kofi Bwache. Samuel Yao, Logosu. Lord Safo. Ahmed Isa Musafa Karim. Emmanuel Boachi. Turn to the right and present your coat. Take a, a bow and take your seats. <laughs> Jeffrey Opon Chechoku. <laughs> Natamba ha Hamida Sigrina. <laughs> Abdul Wahab Wampuni Seju. Deborah, Deborah Pienim Kwabna. Godwin Bwache Atakura. Frida Abwa Fereye. Alithia Basau. Mildred Asamoa Frimpong. Mavis Annabel Ade. Rhoda Kofi. Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seat. Bridget Osafo Ousu. Annette Fatima Isaka Awudu. Kofi Eja Akupoku. Samuel Kofi Amwa Enchi. <laughs> Prince Kumi Akwa Jr. <laughs> Kofi Ado Asare Ankuma. <laughs> Jojo jo Adum Otri. <laughs> Pink 
Kwa Jude Kwame Apple. Abna for you are Benedicta Ajimai Boatin. Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seat. Thank you very much, preceptors, for gowning our students. Thank you so much. We are privileged to have some parents who are pharmacists who are here with us to gown their awards. So I'll call the parents to kindly come upstage, then after that we will call the award. Dr. And Mrs. Priscilla Enimapoku, <laughs> Mr. Bright Boateng, <laughs> Dr. Sefa Clifford, Dr. And Mrs. Vivian Parker Macion. Pam Michael Asenso. Pam Frederick Opombewa. Pam Ebenezer Amachi Bediaku. Dr. And Mrs. Vivian Buama. Professor Eric Bwachi Jesse, <laughs> Dr. Samuel Cole Donko. Okay. Andrew Poku Jefferson. Nana Ekia Boateng. <laughs> Tiwa Vanessa Sefa. <laughs> Emmanuel Paka Makion. <laughs> Derek Asenso. <laughs> Abna. Akuma Opombewa <laughs> Ohinia Sante Amachi Bediako <laughs> Henretta Nimakon Buama <laughs> Nana Aba Otu Turn to the right and present your quotes. Turn to the Sorry, bow, take a bow and take your seat.
the, the pharmacists who are standing up here are mainly our preceptors. So we'll give them the opportunity of going one other set. Austin Park, we see Yeboa. Peku Enchi Sapon. Emisa Francis Shre. Calvina Senior Medicra. Dion Che Bafo. Annabeth Koko Okansi. Samuel Teti. Andy Ajari. Eric Opoku. Millicent Bedu Boasenki. Turn to the right and present your coat. Take a bow and take your seat. Take a bow and take your seat. Thank you very much, gowners. We are very grateful for your assistance. So now, the gowners, you can take your seat. <laughs> Professor Aponsa. Dr. Yasantua Osei. Dr. Kofi Buama. Dr. Takra. Dr. Janet Amuyao. Dr. Joseph Edu. Mr. Che Frimpong. <laughs> Professor Ayesu. Professor Cynthia Amenindankwa. Dr. Duabwachi. Dr. Fukuo. Dr. Cynthia Yeboa. Okay. So, Cynthia, please wait next round. Cletus and not a champion. I could see a pong. Joel Kwekumafu. Emanuela Ayebota Akamo Yemisi Deborah Oshobu Lawson Lawrence Nilamte Idara Akabio Ikomo Bom Emmanuel Ata Ousu Pepra Kinsley yeah. Abrakwa Kojo Dampari Apia yeah. 
Turn to the right and present your coat. Take a bow and take your seats. A short announcement, please. Car number GW7795Q. Car number G, owner of car number GW7795Q. Kindly attend to your car. Thank you. Evans Osage. Bismarck Abwajeje, <laughs> Calvin Ofori Abwakwa, Roger Nimo, <laughs> Dominic Kwame Blay, <laughs> Nia Ite Hagan. Kweku Edu Ejechu. Ajimai Mpempe Akwesi. Ogozo Prayer. Azanu Holali. Turn to the right and present your codes. Turn to the right, bow, take a bow, and take your seat. Frederick Ousu. Apia Emmanuel Jr. Halimatu Abdul Siddiq. Samantha Krantin Yeboa. Abna Sewa Enchibu Esiaku. Gideon Enchibu Esiaku. Norbert Opong Abilan Ab Abalima Liz Ajua Aponsan Yeboa Amazing Akumia Ajimai Jacqueline Smith Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seat. Thank you very much, Gowness. Kindly take your seat. Dr. Cynthia Yeboa. Dr. Joseph 
Agbihia. Dr. Sego. Dr. P.K. Brichum. Dr. Angelina Opoku Binewa. Dr. Esther Asantua Achirekun. Dr. Samuel Nati. Dr. Kweku upon Jenfi. Dr. Ma Professor Maria L. Gwachi Jesi. Dr. Efia Pimpoma Amafo. Vanessa Opoku Ajimai. <laughs> Benedicta Eliklin Ajaklu. Angelique Nanesi Osei Alomile. <laughs> Bethany Amma Echa Ousu Setre. <laughs> Ohine Dakwa Steven. <laughs> Eric AJ. Benedicta Abnayali. <laughs> Mami Adwa Eninfo. <laughs> Joycelyn Macando. <laughs> Abigail Eshen. <laughs> Turn to the right and present your quotes. Turn to the right and take a bow. And <laughs> take a bow and take your seat. <laughs> Quenin Ban Quen Joel. Question for Impong. <laughs> Esther Elimo Godwin Aponsa Isiama. <laughs> Vanessa Efriye Ajimai. <laughs> Jocelyn Amankwa Aj Ajekum. <laughs> Wilhelmina Ikua Ata Kujo. Victoria Na Ashiokai Mensa. Charis Bisson. Nana Adjoa Nyama Apa. Turn to the right and present your quotes. Take a bow and take your seat.
Th thank you very much, Gaunes. We are privileged to have with us the VC who is a pharmacist. So we'll call on Professor Rita Akosia Dixon to down. And then we'll call the provost, Professor Christian Ajari. And then we'll call the dean. Professor in cancer, sorry, in cancer. We will call on our guest speaker, who is also a pharmacist, Doc, Mr. Chapati. We will call on Professor Aponsa. We'll call on Dr. Samuel Donko. We'll call on Mr. Kwekusafo. We'll call on Mr. Benjamin Kwating Frimpong. We'll call on Ms. Dr. Andy Poku. David. Adobia Ado Titibo Ramatu Ms. Bao Barbara Yatin Crang Felicity Yabua Dochi Millicent Akabati So turn to the right and present your quote. Take a bow and take your seat. Monique Ama Aka. Emmanuel Amamis Sechua Ampofu. Gibson Apia Kubi. Loko Waris Samuel. Jay Godwin and Ewering. Emmanuel Ejekum Dakum. Leslie Osemen. Turn to the right and present your quotes.
take a bow and take your seat. Honorable Governors, kindly take your seats. This brings us to the end of the gowning process. Shall we have another resounding round of applause for yourselves for this great achievement? You've done so well. I know the past four years or five or so have been very rigorous, but you have studied, you have worked so hard, and you have come this far. So well done, and congratulations once again. I would like to acknowledge Nana Basua Kumanim III, Otunfo Brimpong Hene, and also Nana Abiem Danso, Otunfo Brimpong Hene Chami. We thank you very much for coming. So we'll quickly want to move on to the next on the schedule, which is administration of the pledge. And I would like to call on Professor Samuel Asarin Kanta, the Dean of the Faculty. Professor Chair, Professor Chair, with your permission, I would want to administer the White Coat Ceremony Pledge. Can we have all the students up on their feet and keep standing? Before we take the oath, I want to one more time add my voice to acknowledging the Pumaska Society of Ghana for giving us copies of the BNF to enhance your knowledge and practice. Please clap for Pumaska Society of Ghana. As a student of pharmacy, who believes there is a need to build and reinforce a professional identity founded on integrity, ethical behavior, and honor? Who believes that this development, a vital process in your education, will help ensure that you are true to the professional relationship and establish between yourself and society as you become a member of the pharmacy community? Who believes integrity, honesty, and commitment to service must be an essential part of your everyday life. How do you pledge? I, I promise,
Congratulations. 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 We are proud of you. You may resume your seats. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Next on our program, we would like to take a short message from the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Dr. Samuel Ko Donko. Our own pharmacist, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Dixon, who is the chairperson of this occasion, I would want to plead with you to allow me or permit me to stand on all established protocols by the Dean of the School of Pharmacy. It's not easy to have your Vice Chancellor of the University being a pharmacist. I think that's the second time we have it. So, as students of the School of Pharmacy, indeed, you should be very, very proud of yourself. It's also refreshing to come back here, KNUST Mahama Mata, where I was trained to see that the school is growing, it's becoming bigger and bigger. We were a class of 52 at our time, and today we have 250 people getting into the clinical phase of the profession. I would want to ask all the young ones here today, are you happy? Yeah. Are you happy to belong to the profession pharmacy? Yeah. Thank you. You made the best decision of your life to opt to read pharmacy, which we call the noble profession. And I'm sure you will never regret it, just like I did many years ago. But you are now in a transition phase. When you were going through your pledge. I realized that I'm supposed to speak on ethics. But after going through the pledge you've taken, I said, do, we, do I really have to speak? Because a lot of things you did say here is exactly what the ethics is all about. Particularly, I also took knowledge of a part that says, I would utilize my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values in my preparation to become a registered pharmacist. So you are in a transition phase preparing to become a registered pharmacist. And I can assure you, you will be successful at that. But it can only happen in this phase of it, which is your apprenticeship. You are now going to go through an apprenticeship. The days of your pharmaceutics, your pharmacognosy, your posology, and your pharmacology, it's time to apply them. It's time to go into the practical phase of all that training. And that you'll be guided by preceptors all practicing pharmacists to make that transition smoothly to become a pharmacist. As I was invited here to come, I was assigned a duty and to speak on a particular topic. The theme I've been asked to address today is of utmost significance, not only for your personal and professional development, but also for the integrity and trustworthiness of the pharmacy profession as a whole. The theme is the importance of ethics in contemporary pharmacy practice. As future pharmacists, you will find yourselves at the forefront of healthcare delivery, entrusted with the pivotal role of ensuring the safe and effective use of medicines. In this role, you will encounter numerous ethical dilemmas, and I repeat, numerous ethical dilemmas, ranging from issues of patient confidentiality and informed consent to conflict of interest and professional integrity. Have, how you navigate these ethical challenges will not only define your character as healthcare professionals, but also shape the quality of care you provide to your patients. At the heart of ethical pharmacy practice lies the fundamental principle of beneficence acting in the best interest of your patient, which your pledge actually outlined. This principle underscores the importance of prioritizing patient welfare above all else, whether it be in dispensing of medications, providing counseling, 
or collaborating with other healthcare professionals. As pharmacists, you have a duty to ensure that your actions are guided by this principle, placing the needs and safety of your patients above any personal or professional interest. And it's for no reason that the motto of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, which you aspire to belong to in the future, says Amicus Humani Generis, friends of the human race. But equally important is another principle of non-maleficence, do no harm, cause no harm. In your pursuit of improving patient outcomes, it is imperative to recognize the potential risk and adverse effects associated with medications and interventions. Ethical pharmacy practice demand that you exercise caution and diligence in your decision-making processes, minimizing harm to your patient and mitigating potential risk to their health. Another key component you realize is integrity, honesty, and transparency. These are cornerstones of ethical behavior in pharmacy practice. And I repeat, integrity, honesty, and transparency. Upholding these three values fosters trust and credibility, not only among patients, but also amongst your peers and colleagues. As future pharmacists, it is incumbent upon you to adhere unwaveringly to the highest standards of professional conduct, maintaining the trust and confidence placed in you by the public and the profession. I would want to at this stage take you through certain scenarios. I, mean, I, mean, I did mention of ethical dilemmas you would be faced. I would want to practicalize it for you. Various facets of pharmacy practice. The first of all, I would want to give you a scenario of a community pharmacy practice. It's a real case. A lady pharmacist working in a community pharmacy who gives clients a private number, develops a relationship with the client, then order, the client now orders products, working in a pharmacy decides that I will order the products directly from a wholesaler for you because now I know you, so it will save you this percentage. It will cost you less. So let's say the patient says on Lepetor or also on Novask, you are going to make this savings. So I'll order from wholesaler and supply you directly, a client of the pharmacy that you work for, but you step aside because you have developed a certain relationship with someone in an attempt to help the person. Think about the ethical dilemma associated with that. I will pick another one as a superintendent pharmacist who hangs the lines when you come out and become a pharmacist, but you are so busy to even attend or go to that pharmacy, something happens in the pharmacy. A patient dies because MCAs and nurses working in the pharmacy decide to administer infusions, administer some injections, something goes bad. The pharmacist license is suspended for three years. This is a rare case that happened in this country not long ago. This is another a, 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 an ethical dilemma you should be faced with. You are responsible for everything that happens in the pharmacy. And therefore, leaving the pharmacy not undercover is an area that you need to think of. That's why I said this is it. In the area of ethics, one would say that intentions can play a role. What was your intention for doing it? Sometimes you may have good intentions, but ethically it could give you a bad outcome. A patient walks to you in a pharmacy, in severe asthma attack, acute, you need to salvage this patient, comes to you, needs, a, needs a, I mean, an inhaler. So you decide to give Ventolin inhaler, or the patient says, I need Ventolin inhaler immediately. You check on the shelf, what you have is expired. Real life situation that you are faced with. But the patient needs to be saved before he can even get to the nearest hospital. With your good intention to save this patient, you offer the Ventolin inhaler to the patient. Expired, you take, you offer, you take. Later on, after the patient has recovered, says that I developed dermatitis, I developed a certain allergic reaction from what you gave me from the expired product, and decides to take you to the pharmacy council or send you to the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana and you are brought before the district committee. You had a good intention, but you gave an expired product. That is an ethical dilemma for you when you, are in the, when you are in the field and you are practicing. You move into industry to become an industrial pharmacist, head of quality assurance. You are the ogre. What, everything is trusted to you. You need to pass the product before the product comes out. A batch of a product, which may be cost about $200,000, but the USP or the British Pharmacopoeia specifies, that it must fall in terms of assay between 99 to maybe 100%, and they miss it by 0.1. 
98.9, just point 0.1, and your CEO, the production pharmacist, comes to you. Please do something about it. This is a batch of $200,000. Something will happen to us. Workers will be laid off. The company will collapse if you don't pass it. You are the quality assurance pharmacist. This ethical issue comes before you. What, we, what are you going to do? These are the ethical dilemmas you'll be facing. I am giving you practical things that you are likely to face wherever you find yourself. You are a medical representative. You want to be a medical representative. How many of you here would want to be, get into medical sales and marketing as medical representative? Let me see for those who are aspired to be there. Yeah, I see some good hands. I was a medical sales representative for many years. So good one. But you have a product you are marketing. Let's give a typical product like you are supposed to market a product like anaphanel, which is to be used for various antidepressant cases, used for various neuroleptic cases that we know of. But off-label indication shows that it can do very well for it may be erectile dysfunction. There is no license for it. It is not indicated. But you know when you promote that in pharmacies, you get the sales. When you promote it to doctors and they use it, they, it will work. But this is an area that the product has not been licensed. No indications for it. But for your sales and for your target to be achieved, are you going to do it to market the product off-label indication where it is not licensed for the sake of sales? At that point in time, you see yourself as a sales rep looking for sales target to achieve. You are, that is an ethical dilemma you'll be faced with as a professional pharmacist. For those in the hospitals, most of you are going into hospitals. And I'll tell you about another practical case which happened in a, a Fiacuanta hospital. A physician specialist writes prescriptions for morphine and petidine, and pharmacists are dispensing. Every time they write their prescriptions, being dispensed. You get prescriptions, so as a pharmacist, your intention is to serve. Not, that's right. Eventually, it turns out that it is the doctor, the physician specialist, who is taking this injection. Taking the inje injection. What happens? Cardiac arrest and all that. Doctor passes away. Assuming this case is brought before the pharmacy council, you are administering based on prescriptions. The question you'll be asked, did you go ever to follow to see the patient? If the patient was at the ward, all those patients whose names were there, to ensure that the medicines, these dangerous drugs, which are restricted drugs, are actually being given to the right patient? Did you follow up? This will be an ethical dilemma for you. Just because you saw a prescription for a restricted drugs does not mean that you should give. And there's a reason why there's what they call the dangerous drugs book, that you must keep records of all the dangerous drug books and those that it goes for. So in the hospital, you might think you are running away because you see your prescriptions, but you will be faced in situations like that where you need to be courageous and bold enough to say you won't serve the prescription until you see the patient. Let me also go to a case which also really happened in the UK and the pharmacist was suspended. Another ethical situation. This, ph this pharmacist in the, in the practice developed a relationship with a client who picks the medications from the pharmacy, assigned pharmacy. Eventually, when the relationship ended, the client reported to the Royal Pharmacy of Great Britain that she had been used and damned and she has been taken advantage of. It was investigated, and the pharmacist's license was withdrawn. The simple reason is you could have, once you got into a relationship, knowing that you have patient-client relationship of that nature, you should have made that patient go to another pharmacy to continue taking the medications. So Anna, an undue advantage was taken there, and the pharmacist's license was suspended, and it was published in the Royal Society of Great Britain Journal. So these are ethical situations you'll be facing in various areas of practice. I have talked about medical representatives. I have talked about the industry. I have also talked about hospital practice. There are many more, and some of them are very recent. And the one I mentioned where the lady was picking the medication, actually the pharmacist in Singana and the pharmacist lost their job as well when they realized was giving the medicine directly from wholesalers. So as, as getting into this field of practice, your transition phase, all these ethical dilemmas are planned for you to guide you, that you make decisions, sometimes you may have good intentions, but think of the outcome. When you are held before the district committee of the pharmacy council or the pharmaceutical society of Ghana, would you be able to justify what you did? Do no harm, and everything you do, do it for the ultimate benefit of your patient. These two things should guide you. Honesty, integrity, as well as transparency should be your hallmark. The Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana has a 28 article code of ethics as part of the PSGH constitution, 
which I will implore all of you to look for and thoroughly digest to help you on your professional journey. Ethics will be part of your professional qualifying examinations, and therefore, seriously look into your ethics. It will help you a lot in your practice. Once again, on behalf of all pharmacists in Ghana, on behalf of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, I say congratulations to each and every one of you. On reaching this significant milestone, and may you continue to uphold the principles of ethics and honor, with honor and distinction throughout your future careers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Peter Donko. And thanks for such practical and real life examples. In our, in our pharmacy practice. I believe that our students here, and as a matter of fact, all pharmacists here have taken heed to your message and will stick to the highest form of professional practice as is expected of us. We are very grateful. We would like to, of course, we cannot go without receiving a short message from our provost. And so with a round of applause, please let's welcome <laughs> Professor Christian Ejari to give us a message. Thank you very much. Prof Chair, with your permission, can I stand on the existing protocol? Um, first, let me congratulate you. Um, getting to this far, you are, you are left with just some, I don't want to say years, some few months. And this very room or this auditorium will be able to confer the FAMD degrees on you. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to appreciate the lecturers, those who have guided you to this far, and I believe they are also, and also the preceptors, they are going to guide you to the final um, preparation and then the graduation. Um, I take this opportunity again, Prof Chair, you have a busy schedule, but with the sort of love that you have for pharmacy, you've managed to be with us. I know you have another urgent meeting that you are supposed to have, but you are with us. We are very grateful. Um, my students, what is the essence of this exercise? Everything has been captured in the pledge. And maybe I will encourage the management of the faculty to print and paste them in the clinical uh, classrooms or the lecture halls so that every day we'll be reminded of what we are supposed to be doing. It borders on professionalism, ethics, as our president said, integrity, social justice, empathy, and then compassion for your patients. Sometimes you may have to, your senior colleagues will tell you, you may have to dip into your pockets and help your patients. It's part of the profession that you have decided to join. But the issue is that now the let me say the teaching side that you are supposed to have the clinical training, there are other pharmacy students from other institutions and also other um, students from our different health programs also undertaking their intention. You are serving as ambassadors of the university. You are supposed to exhibit beyond what we have even pledged. Because now preceptors will be so keen about students who are serious. But now the challenge that we are having is the internet and then the social media. That is the complaints or what we've been receiving over the years. That um, you're always with your phone. They will tell you that they, it's a means for you to get information. That, that is good. But remember that where you are, you are different. So you use the phone or whatever you are using to get information to help your patient or in your training. But because of increasing numbers, some of you will also like to hide and do your own things. But remember that at the appropriate time, you will be examined alone. And some of the preceptors will be there to ask you questions. So um, as you may be aware, when you are being presented 
to be examined. And then if you pass, you are called into the profession. The first requirement is what? Good conduct. So very, very important in your clinical settings and then in the faculty. Please make sure you exhibit good conduct. And I believe today I saw something that uh, I was so happy. Compared to the previous years, almost about 95% were here on time. That is a plus for you. And I believe this is not just one-time event, but that's what you've been doing. Keep them up. Keep all this, and then I believe you are going to live up to the seven-star pharmacy that we expect. With this, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Provost. We would like to now take an advice and closing remarks from our chairperson, Professor Mrs. Rita Akusia Dixon. I'm just thinking that we have heard enough. So I'm going to pose a question. A word to the wise. It is. It is. I just want us to just make or agree on a mental contract. I look at your white coat. Look at it. Have a firm look at it. This is the kind of white that we are agreeing from today, as far as your lab coats are concerned. Approved? White is a symbol of hope, purity, transformation, if you like creativity, innovation. I just want to say that what you have gone through today, as you continue with the training, may all what we are trying to get into you to ensure that you are practicing as an international 21st century PharmD practitioner, transform lives, impact lives, save lives, protect lives, not just in Ghana, but across the world, everywhere that you would find yourself when you are done with the training. We wish you all the best and may the good Lord continue to order your steps. I want to thank all of you very much. The provost has done a good job with the appreciation, so I won't take too much of your time. As for our preceptors, all our stakeholders, we don't know what to say to you. We say we love you for what you do to support these students. Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor and Mrs. Rita Akusia Dixon. We are also very grateful to you. Now, before we receive our vote of thanks from one of the students, I would like to acknowledge the committee, the planning committee of this white coat ceremony. And I would like to call out the names of the committee members. If they are here, I would like them to please come up front um, so that we can acknowledge your hard work. The chairperson is Dr. Mrs. Mercy Opariado. We also have Dr. Mrs. Vivian Etiapa Buama. Professor Isaac Kingsley Amponsa. Professor James Opon Chechiku. Dr. Newman Osafo. Dr. Adeline Angosala. Mrs. Mary Kunchobe. Emmanuel Esiama. And Annabeth Okante.
Wow, is that Annabeth? Wow, Annabeth, you look good. All right, so this is our 2024 White Coat Ceremony Planning Committee. They've done a good job, haven't they? We are so grateful to you. God bless you so much. Please, you may take your seat. I would like to call on Miss Samantha Kurantin Yeboa to give us the vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Evelyn. Good afternoon to us all. I deem it a great privilege to be called upon to give the words of thanks for this distinguished occasion. I would first of all like to thank the Almighty God for such a well put together occasion and for how far we've come as a class. We would also like to extend a hearty thank you to the management of this great university, the Vice Chancellor, the Pro Vice Chancellor, Provost of the College of Health Sciences, Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, Deans of Faculties and Heads of Departments present. Our profound gratitude goes to the Chairman of the occasion, the keynote speaker, representatives of the FDA and Pharmacy Council, and all dignitaries present. Thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to grace the ceremony. We will now take a moment to thank our sponsors. Your support and partnership has played a key role in the success of our event. We are sincerely grateful. Here's a special thank you to our governors and parents for adorning us with these resplendent white coats. To our venerable faculty lecturers, you have kept us on our feet and at our best. Though sometimes the tablets were too big for us to swallow, it has true. <laughs> It has truly been an honor to be a set of your students. We thank you. To the White Coat Ceremony Planning Committee, under the chairpersonship of our very own Dr. Mrs. Mercy Na Adwele Opariado. <laughs> we doff our hearts to you. May God crown your relentless efforts with blessings. The Tech TV, Far media and all the dexterous hands working behind the scenes, we appreciate you. We compound a special gracias to our amazing family and friends, as well as those watching online. Your collective support has been our backbone. To our lovely parents and guardians, who we are humbled by your prayers and your and thankful for your selflessness and benevolence, no matter how much our learning materials kept increasing in prices. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being our gold, our frankincense, and may. To the GPSA president, our able reps, Anabeth Koko Okansi and Emmanuel Esiama, and our shadow class WCC committee, who have worked in collaboration with the faculty to put this together, we appreciate you. As I approach the touchdown of my expedition, permit me to acclaim the sagacious and indefatigable class of RX-25. Congratulations for making it this far. It is indeed the doing of the Lord, and it is marvelous in our sight. From the acidic Max in posology, to Prof Timber's iconic smile, where we just couldn't put two and two together in the pharmacology class, to the most memorable medicinal chemistry MCQs on record. And seeing Mama Mercy's face almost every single day these past few weeks, as topical as they may seem, these experiences and more have attained sustained release in our minds. Just take a look at our beautiful selves. This white coat is not just any coat. It is a symbol of professionalism, altruism, duty, honor, and integrity. We have been officially ushered into our clinical angle. How can we ever forget the famous phrase, pharmaceutical care? 
It resonates within us with 100% bioavailability. As we approach, as we approach finally becoming pharmacists, it is my prayer that the God of our weary years, the God of our silent years, and the one who has brought us thus far on the way will by his might lead and preserve us till the very end. Before I resume my seat, I will leave us with these words in South African Zulu. Ingobuningi Botando. Sizofila Ukuze Siboni Ukuchuma Komunye Nomuni. Meaning, meaning, with love abounding, we shall live to see each other's prosperity. Thank you. May be seated, please. Thank you so much, Samantha, for this beautiful vote of thanks. Thank you for thanking us in such a beautiful way. All right, so we have come to the end of today's program. And for those of you who came early, I believe you saw snippets of um, the university campus and all that we are doing around on videos being streamed on the screen. Um, I would like to implore all our visitors, whether you've been here before or this is your first time, to, you know, after the program, take a walk around, take a tour around the university, come to the faculty, have a look at where your, your kids or your students, I mean, your words have been studying, and enjoy yourself on our campus, and have a nice time looking at our beautiful scenery. We would like to take the closing prayer by Reverend Dr. J.W. Echampong. Please, let's rise as we pray. Our Lord and our Master, we thank and bless your name for beginning this program with us and ending successfully with us. Indeed, you are the Alpha and Omega. Even as we have gathered here and gone through this ceremony, we want to thank you on behalf of these, your sons and daughters, for how far you have brought them. The period of formation and education, the challenging moments, through thick and thin, you have been by their side, providing for whatever they needed. We thank you for their parents and guardians, benefactors and benefactresses. We thank you for lecturers and preceptors, we thank you for whoever has contributed in any way to their education and formation to this point. And we thank you for providing all these facilities for them and education and formation for them through the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And so we want to thank you for our leadership and for all that you do for us and through us, as well as our stakeholders. We want to commend our students before you even as they transition to another level of their education and formation, we pray that your persons will continue to be with them, give them wisdom, give them tenacity, grant them, grant them the grace to be able to imbibe all that they have been told and they are going to continue to learn so that they will be well formed to be available instruments in your hands to continue to provide quality health care in their field of endeavor. We pray your blessings upon their lives wherever they will be. Lead, guide, and direct them. We thank you for all those who came here from far and near as we are about to disperse. We pray that you carry us safe and sound to our various destinations. As you've ushered us into a new month, may your goodness and your mercy go ahead of us. Bless us, bless this university, bless our homeland Ghana. We thank and bless you for hearing our prayers through Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we please remain standing while the um, people on the high table or platform and the faculty um, proceed out, please?
would like to invite all preceptors to meet us at the faculty conference room for a short refreshment, please. All right, so congratulations to you all. Thank you very much.